Hi guys, it's Wade McMaster here. Just got another quick video here for you today. I'm going to be showing you how you can add or edit pages on your WordPress website. Now this could be that maybe you've had a web designer create a website for you, maybe you've bought a WordPress website, or you simply started a website and you just need this as a bit of a reference. It's going to walk you through the process of uh, adding and editing existing pages. Now there's a few, di few different ways we can go about this. First of all, I'm just going to go to the main website. Now what we're looking at here is we want to add so yeah pages to our website. Now the only time I wouldn't be adding a page is if I'm running a blog and I want to add a blog post. So if I have a blog and anything I any time I add a post, it'll end up in this blog section here. But for anywhere else in the website, like this one, any of these pages here, even the actual blog page itself is a page with posts within it. So uh, anything up that shows up at the top here is actually going to be a page. So what we're going to do. There's a few ways you can do this. If I'm on, if I'm logged in and I'm on the website, I can actually go to another page, maybe this about page here. And there's a few ways I can do this. I can actually go up the top here to edit page. Or I can even go, if I open this up on a new tab, I can go down if I'm logged in, because when you first log in, we end up at a screen just like this one. I can come down to pages on the left here, all pages. I can find the page I want to edit, click on it, and basically go from there. But for now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say I've logged in, I've gone to view the website and I found a page, and I think, oh, this needs to be fixed up or edited, and I'm going to edit this page. So I'm going to go up top here to edit page. And now we can get started. Now, this is actually a page that I created before the WordPress update called Gutenberg. So if you end up going to edit a page and you end up with this scenario with a classic block, but nothing's displaying, one way to quickly fix that is to simply click on the block. Once you click on it, these three dots will show up. Click on that again, and then click convert to blocks. This will actually convert the page into the new editor format. So you can go in and edit it. Otherwise you may simply open up and find it the way it is. Now it's a simple case now of going in, if I want to change anything, maybe I want to change something here. Maybe I put here for over the last 15 years. So, okay, I've just made a small edit to this page. Now, if I want to, I can actually update that page. Up the top here, it says update. So I can simply go update, or even if I think, man, you know, I want to take this page down for a little bit while I edit it. Maybe it's going to take me a week or so. I can switch it to a draft and actually turn it into a draft and it will no longer be public. But for now, I'm just going to go up the top to update. And you see, I've now updated the page. So pretty straightforward. I can go in and edit it as I would any other document. Type text, I can add blocks, that sort of thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a new page. We're even going to touch on the editor just a little bit. So that way, if you've never used it before, you understand how it works. Now, once again, there's a few different ways we can do this. Go back to our dashboard. If I'm logged in, I can actually go down to pages and click add new to add a new page. I can go into the all pages menu, add new up here, or even once again, if I'm at the top here, whether I'm here or on the website, I can go up the top to this new drop down and click page, which if I am looking at the website, you can see here, we've got this new button here, which allows me to add a blog post, a picture, but for now I'm going to go new and add a new page and click that. This is probably the easiest way as it will simply follow you around the entire website. But regardless of where you go, this top bar will always pretty much remain there with this option. So I'm going to call this uh, new page. I might call it uh, services. Now the way it works, this editor is a bit different than the last editor on WordPress if you've used that, but it's still pretty straightforward. I can still click down here and start typing. Our services are for anyone who wants a website or logo designed. And you can see I've got this block I've created here. This is called uh, a paragraph block. Now as I'm typing, if I type and click enter, I actually start a new block. So you can see here one block, I've got two blocks here. And I can simply type down the pages I normally would. So you can say our first service is web design. I'm not the most accurate typer, but anyway. And I can simply go down the page and add as I want to. And as you're going and adding any of these paragraphs, you can actually even highlight as you would before. So let's say I want to highlight the word web design here. I can simply highlight it. I've got italics. 
bold. I can add a link. I can center align it, right align it, left align it. And to add a link is pretty simple too. If I click highlight this here and click this link button, I can type in my address, which usually you want to include the HTTP colon slash slash in front. So maybe I want to link to google.com. Or if I want to link to another page in the website, if I type in, say, about for my about page, you'll see all these different things pop up. So I can go about web design Mirabara, click on the enter, and I've actually got a link to another page on the website. The other thing is you may want to add subheaders to your page. So let's say I'll go down here and I want to go in deeper into web design. I can type in web design and uh, go up top here to this sort of backwards P icon, click that. This little drop down appears, I can choose heading. And now I have the subheading for web design. And you see on the right here where all the block options are, this being a header block and these being paragraph blocks, this is where I can change everything. I can make it a header six, header five, header four. Generally, I don't want to choose a header one because that is more or less reserved for the title of the page, but I can choose header two, header three. So if I had web design and then I wanted to go into further subsections of that, I could then make them header threes under the header two and that sort of thing, which is good for your search engine, op search engine optimization. The other thing is now, if I want to change some of the text here in a block, maybe I want to highlight it. If I actually select this block, like I said, I've got these settings up here, but over on the right under the block settings, I also have these other settings here like font size. I can make it huge if I want to. I can also just go one increment at a time over here. I can also do what's called a drop cap, which is basically the, the first letter of the sentence becomes large like this. And then I can change some of the colors like the background color, I can make a light gray or a yellow. I can make the text red. So you have all these options here. I'm just gonna clear those. So you can actually make this, change the appearance of the text here quite easily as well. Now under advanced is sort of more for web designers and people who know how to do CSS code. So I generally leave that for now. But you can change any of the text subheadings as you wish. The other thing too is if I want to, I can add an image. So let's say instead of going down the bottom, one thing I can do is I can come down the bottom here and as I hit enter, I can actually hit a little, the little plus symbol here on the left or plus symbol at the top left here. And I can add an image. What I'm actually gonna do, just to show you how it works, this is going to work the exact same way, except I want to add the image in between two blocks. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol here between the two blocks, or maybe just above the first block. If I go to the center of each block and hover over the edge, I get a plus symbol to add a block in between those sections. So I'm going to add one above this image here. Pick image. If it's not here in the most used, go down to common blocks, and it'll be under there, image. And then I click on media library. I can go and upload a file over here if I want to, or I can go back to my media library and simply pick a file, maybe this one, select it. And now I have an image at the top of my page as well. Now, the other thing you might be wondering is, I don't want the images top and bottom. Maybe I want to right and left align my images. It's as simple as clicking on the image and you've got the options here to have it centered. Left aligned, if I resize that, it will actually shrink. I can make it right aligned. I can also, as before, go down the right here to my block settings and change. So that's basically how you can type, add a bit of text formatting, link, add some images, and just, they're just the pure basics of this block editor. Now, you, if you have the time, it's worth exploring, going into here when you wanna add a new block and just seeing what's available. You can add YouTube embeds. You can add what's called a classic block, which is kind of like the classic WordPress editor style if you prefer to work that way. Um, there's all these other elements in here, like a bullet point list, a cover, which is like an image with a bit of text over the top, an audio player, if you have an MP3 you want to upload. There's so many different bits and pieces here you can play with. And then if you want to play with the settings, this section on the right under block, which will show up as you click, is where all the settings are for that particular block. Now what I'm going to do is, before I go ahead and publish this page, which I'm going to do on this website, but I'm going to remove it because it is a live website, but it is only a quiet one I use to gather local web design jobs. If you have a SEO plugin installed, you do want to put your title and a description in here, trying to adhere to the amount of characters. So if I say web design Fraser Coast, I'm using the all-in-one SEO plugin. So I've used 48 out of 60 characters. So when I type in a description, 
we do web design, blah, blah, blah. You'll see I've typed in here 11 characters of 160 characters. So this is good for your search engine optimization as well, just to type that in there. And also if you have any images, add some alt text in here. That's just another thing for your search engine optimization if you're going to be adding, whoops, if you're going to be adding in bits and pieces. So now, we're, let's say we're happy with this page. I can go on to document, check a few things. Now, if I click up on the right, if I click across the document, these are actually the document settings for this page. I can go in, I can add a featured image if I want to, which is more of a blog post thing and less of an image thing. But depending on how your website's set up, that may be useful. So uh, if you experiment with that by adding or taking out an image, it could be a bit of fun just to see how it looks. I get a page attributes. Uh, most of this is going to be pretty straightforward. You're probably not going to want to touch any of this stuff. But um, if I'm going to save a draft first, now if I save this draft, let's say, okay, before we publish this, okay, let's say I've, I've not finished this page and I want to come back in a day to finish it off. I've just saved my draft and I've logged out. I come back a day later and I'm on, on this page and I want to log in again and continue that draft. If I go into my pages on the left here, you'll find here I've got no title, which is actually not what I'm after. If I go up here to drafts, I can actually filter out anything that isn't a draft. And you see my services page is listed here. All I gotta do is click on that page. And I'm here again. So that's pretty easy. You log in and you go down here to pages and all your pages are listed there. You can filter them and open up the ones that you're still working on. So now that I'm in here, I can actually have a look. Again, if I want to, one thing I can do for another search engine optimization is actually add a permalink. At the moment, it's webdesignmarabo.com.au slash services. If you have a really long title, sometimes it works. it's good to shorten this so you have a shorter web address. If that's too complicated, you can forget that part. It's not overly important. Um, but yeah, before we, so what I tend to do, I always tell people proofread your page, preview it before you start. So I'll click this preview button. And this has opened up a new tab up here. You see, this is my page here. There's not a lot on it because of the video, but let's say I am happy with that page. I go back up over to the tab I was editing. I click publish first and I get a few options here. I can actually schedule it if I want to, but I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to click publish. And now I've published a page. Now if I go back out to the website, before we finalize this, the page has been added to the website and it is there. Now you can see I've actually already got a services page by the looks of it. And it links off to another website, which is my main web design website over here because that's where most of my business is sort of found. But let's say I want to get rid of this because if you don't have a menu set up, it should automatically pop up in here. But I've actually created a menu system for this website and a lot of websites operate on the same system. So what I have to do now, just to make sure I get it exactly where I want it, I go up the top, I go back into my dashboard. Back Now this is once again, this is where you land when you first log in. I go down the left to appearance and then I have menus here. And you can see here, this is my default menu. If you have more than one menu, there's a drop down here, you can choose it. But you can see here, I've got web design, services, about, blog, and contact. Now, I've just created this page, so it's right at the top of the most recent. But if it's not recent, I can go and search for it here. Basically, I tick this page, click add to menu, and I have the same order as before. So now I've got it after contact here. So maybe I want to, even though the page, this won't rename the page, but maybe I want to call it my service. And then I can actually save this menu. I go back up, I'm going to go back out onto this new tab here and I'm going to go home. And you can see it has been added to the end here, my service. So this is the page we just created. It's still called services, but I've chosen to, sh to change the name for the menu, which is a, an awesome feature of the, of the menus um, option here. I can move it up so it's in between about and blog. So this is where you can really customize your navigation menus. So go back out here and refresh. You'll see that my service will move once it refreshes. 
to here. So that's basically how you can get that into your menu. And then if you want to remove an item, you simply click here and click remove and save. So that is basically how you can add a new page to your website. It's there, it's now in the menu. Um, I've removed it from the navigation for now and it's gone. So now the final thing I'm going to teach you very quickly because I don't want this page on my website. This is, an, this, is a, this is a real live website that I use. It doesn't get a lot of traffic, but I still want to keep it nice and neat. I'm going to go into pages. As before, down the left here, I'm going to find my services page, which I just created. You see here, it was published three minutes ago. I'm going to click trash. And you can see here under trash, I have this here. If I want to restore it, I can, or I can simply empty my trash and the page is gone. So anytime you want to delete a page, that's how you get rid of it. So I hope you found that video useful. Um, if you want more like this, please consider subscribing below. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, if you need more videos like this also, I have a free course which will show you how to create a website in WordPress, do everything you need to do to get up and running. That's on my website, which I'll have a link to in the description below and also on the next screen. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.